Hello, everyone. This is Jonathan Little. I'm here with the 107th episode of Weekly Poker Hand. And today, I'm going to be reviewing a hand that I watched deep in a $1,000 buy-in World Series of Poker event. So I folded under the gun. I had nothing. Folds around to a tight, aggressive kid who goes all in for 13800 with blinds at 600 1200 with a 200 ante from the cutoff. Seems perfectly fine and standard. Tight guy folds the button. And then, with 80,000 chip effective stacks, the small blind and the big blind both have 80,000, the player in the small blind decided to go all in for all 80,000 of it. And I think this is a horrendous mistake. Let's just take a look at what happens in this hand, then I'll tell you what I would have done. The player in the big blind actually calls, and the player in the small blind gets completely punished for his mistake as... The player in the big blind has pocket kings. The player in the small blind has ace queen. So what I would have done in this scenario, let's just rewind this hand, is whenever the tight aggressive kid goes all in, or when anyone goes all in, if I have between, if the, if the initial shove is between zero and six big blinds, I tend to make a men re-raise. So say he goes all in for four big blinds. If I'm going to play any hand I'm going to play, I will make it roughly seven big blinds. So he's raising three big blinds on top. So you make it three big blinds on top of his four big blinds. So four plus three is seven. You'll find that most re-raises, most men re-raises, will be enough to make whoever's yet to act play in an incredibly straightforward manner. And that's because a lot of people just do not call seven big blind raises with all sorts of junk. And also a lot of people recognize at this point in the game that calling with, you know, 9-7 suited to try to bust the short stack doesn't really add much value. So that's what I do if they have six big blinds or less. If they have more than six big blinds, I'll typically just call for the same reason. Most people aren't going to put in six big blinds with their nut hands. I'm sorry, with their trash hands, and they're only going to continue with good hands anyway. And you'll find that frequently they will re-raise with their best hands and they will call with their, you know, good but not great hands like pocket nines just hoping to try to see a flop. So instead, what this player in C1 did is he decided to put in 80 big blinds. And the reason he did this is because he thinks, I really don't want the player in the big blind to call. And you have to ask yourself, is the player in the big blind ever just going to call an 11 big blind all in with a marginal hand? The answer is no. I mean, we're deep in a $1,000 tournament. You have to assume your opponents are at least somewhat competent. The guy's not just going to call with jack-10 offsuit hoping to get lucky on you. He's going to fold pretty much everything. And if he does continue, either by calling or re-raising, you can assume your ace-queen is actually not in great shape. Maybe some percentage of the time when you call the ace-queen here, your opponent decides to re-raise with pocket jacks or something like that, and you make a quote-unquote incorrect fold. But even then, it's not like you're trying to flip for 80 or for an 80,000 chip stack at this stage in the tournament. That's just not a good idea. So anyway, I wanted to show you this hand because this is a blunder that I witness pretty much every World Series at least once. I'll see someone isolate a short stack and then run into a better hand and then go broke and just think they get unlucky and or think they got unlucky. And in reality, this player should have put in his 13,000 chips. The player in the big blind likely would have re-raised. And when he re-raises, the ace-queen just folds. They let it go. And they lose no money. Well, they lose 14,000 chips, but they don't lose 80,000 chips. So if you find yourself in this spot, think ahead and do not mindlessly go all in. So you may have mentioned how I have a default strategy in this scenario that I will occasionally deviate from a little bit, but I pretty much stick to it. And that's because I've thought through this situation, and I've been in this situation numerous times, and I've developed what I believe to be a fairly sound strategy. If you want to develop more of these sound strategies with me and hear me discuss my strategies that I think are pretty difficult to exploit, I ch suggest you check out pokercoaching.com. There we have weekly home or monthly homework assignments where the students are presented a relatively big question. And this would be an example of sort of a small question, but a similar question. What would you do if everyone folds around to the cutoff and you are in the small blind with a hand you want to continue with. And then the question is, what do you do? Do you shove with your ace, queens, and ace, kings? Obviously, we say the answer to that is no, if you have an 80 big blind stack. And um, the students will 
write out their answers to that, and I will go through and grade each answer and go over the answers in a webinar so I can discuss all the answers that I think need to be addressed. So anyway, if you want more of that type of interactive learning experience, check it out at pokercoaching.com. I want to thank you for being here this week with me for Weekly Poker Hand. I appreciate it. And remember, when someone goes all in, if they have six big blinds or less and you want to continue, you should usually min-raise your playable hands. And if they have more than six big blinds, you should just call. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll be back again next week with another episode.